All right, you're all set. All right, I think we have enough people to start. So let's do this. All right, so hi everyone. Uh, today I take over Emily for the Sandbox uh, review. Uh, we have a few uh, items to go through, so we can start uh, with the ones in the upcoming list. Uh, the first one is Reloader. Um, anyone has any comments on this one immediately? I think Emily had left some questions, but we didn't really get a response from the project on this. Yes. So I also took a note that uh, there's uh, no presentation to a tag, I believe, in this one. For me, it seemed like the project was overall done. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped the line. Well, there's Karina. I think Josh was first. Okay, Josh. Okay. I just a quick comment as a Kubernetes user. This really feels like a stopgap project that was designed to fill the role of CRDs before CRDs existed, but CRDs exist now. Um, so I I kind of wonder, and and if they'd actually done a tag presentation, I would have asked, you know, what the current user base for this is. Okay, Karina. We do have representation from tag app delivery. So first I was going to ask if tag app delivery did reload or present to you. No, I have not. To my knowledge. And okay. Thank you. And the application doesn't look complete. Um, I know Emily, go ahead. You'll probably talk about some of that. Yeah. So I, I posted some questions on the application. It looks like as you said, it is largely incomplete, but also looking over the code base and the repo kind of to Josh's point is that it was a stopgap project. This seems largely finished. It's not necessarily experimental or innovative. Um, and because there isn't substantial amount of activity going on, there also appears to be some deprecated, um, it's using SHA-1, at least according to the documentation and what I was able to find, which has been deprecated since 2011. So for me, it doesn't sound like it is a good fit for CNCF sandbox. All right. I think I would just add to Josh's comment, though. I'm not sure it's necessarily related to CRDs. Uh, it's it's basically a generic solution for, for core resources, deployments, human sets, any resource basically but uh yeah i don't disagree with the rest so should we ask for them to fill up the missing questions or just uh say it's not a good fit go ahead anyway well given that they haven't responded in three weeks they've been on the agenda for a while um, I would say that they're probably not going to fill in the information. So I would recommend that we move this to a vote for a decision on inclusion. That way we can close the issue. And if, depending on what the TOC's vote is, if we decline, then they can always reapply later with a more complete set of information. Sounds good. Any other comment? Things you came off mute. Oh, uh, uh, I would just get them to talk to SIG apps and a tag app delivery for sure before they do anything. Um, you know, if if they ever want to do anything back again. Okay, so I guess the decision is to move it to a vote. Uh, or hey, or I don't see Bob yet. So or hey, you will follow it up. Awesome. All right, thank you. The, the next one is Sermons. 
which is an open source cloud native proxy less service mesh based on Java bytecode. Um, it has been, it has a complete application and it has been reviewed by Tag Network, um, which includes a full EPR review as well as a recommendation. Any comments on this one? Hey there, uh, it's Nick here from Tag Network. Yeah. Apologies, I'm I'm still a little bit sick with um with flu, but um I think Samant's a really interesting project. Where I think it's really interesting is the uh, the integration direct into uh with, with Java, um without needing to to have any sort of <clears throat> you know sidecar proxy or anything like that. So the the kind of the end goal of the project, which is currently capable because they have support for um, XDS interface as implemented by Istio means that you could in effect implement your your kind of um, Java applications without needing any application modification and, and have those integrate into a, a sort of a wider Istio mesh uh, with with obviously all of the the efficacy that you get from from running a proxyless setup. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I think it's a really nice little setup. Um, it's coming out of, um, I think the, the group behind it are, are from, from China and they're saying that there's a lot of financial institutions over there. Yeah. Well, we, um, who are using it, um, financial industry love it because as I say, the, the, the low latency, easy integration, and, and obviously the, the kind of the security you get just out of the Java sandbox. So, um, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a nice a nice project. So Nick, if I understood correctly, it only because I'm trying to think about how to position this uh, like from a user perspective to recommend this was Istio, right? So if I understood correctly, this is only for Java application, first of all, uh, which Istio supports that as well. Uh, do they do do you know if they do layer seven processing on and per node or it's more like uh, per tenant? That so, wasn't clear to me. Yeah, so it, it's per it would be per application. So they okay. they basically do the integration inside of the Java sandbox. So the um, <clears throat> so the 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 application doesn't doesn't need um, modification because the um, the way the sand I believe the way the sandbox plugin works the JVM plugin works is that it can basically in automatically inject itself into the the core the core Java classes. So things like all of the hijacking for for traffic routing and things like that can automatically be sent um, di direct to, to to wherever the destination be the other the other end proxies be that a, um, a sort of a an Istio or an, uh, an Istio ambient proxy or another Sermant um, endpoint. The the XDS integration means that you can just use you know your standard Istio service declarations and things like that to to be able to do things like configure the service discovery and the load balancing inside. Mm -hmm. um, so it's yeah, it, it's 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 like I think it's I did I did ask the Samant folk to come and present to to the Istio team because I, I think it is really complimentary, you know, to get to get that adoption on board for for Java developers because it does it in such a frictionless way. It, it whether you, the kind of the end result is that you then add, end up just kind of adopting the the sidecar or the the ambient approach inside of your Istio, it's it's a really nice kind of gateway to to be able to get there. Um, you also get a lot of like kind of nice side product out of there as well because obviously the things like the 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 telemetry because it's kind of inside again it's automatically injected. You can. Um, and one of the goals, I think it's on their roadmap, is to be able to do things like um, automated kind of trace injection um, and, and things like that, which which obviously you, you do need to modify applications to for, for upstream requests. But um, yeah, yeah they, they can kind of do that because they just they're just injecting right in on a code level. Um, so, yeah, it, I think it's a cool project. 
Yeah, that, uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So it's specifically targeted for Java application and uh, the scope is per application, which is the right scope in my opinion too. And it provides integration with Istio. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Nick, uh, did you get a sense of like, uh, if they had like a control plane kind of thing, or is it just one data store from where they pull the dynamic configuration information uh, for uh, the apps? Um, I'm having to cast my mind back now to to those sides of things. So the the Istio control plane is is um, is there. I believe there is an additional control plane which is which is optional, which you can deploy. I would I would have to look at the the architecture section of the DTR. I, I, yeah. I apologize. Should be fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's not relevant specifically for uh, okaying uh, at least taking this to what. Um, so thank yeah, you. But they're, yeah, but like, I think one of the questions I asked them when they were looking at this and they mentioned the, the sort of the XDS capabilities. I was like, oh, is your aim to be able to support the you know the the the, the full XDS API and. And that is something that they're working towards. So they they do you know they don't want to kind of create their own control plane when there's there's already one uh, out there which is is doing a great job. And and I think the key thing around integrating with the Istio control plane also means that like Semant Mesh doesn't have to Semant Mesh doesn't have to stand alone. They they can um, do direct integration with with any of the other services which are which are hosted in Istio, which is which is great when you're working in a um, sort of a more heterogeneous setup. All right, thank you. I think if no one has concerns, I think we move this one to a vote. Okay, let's do it. Ah, Karina. I have a really quick question for Nick. Um, I just wanna make sure the Istio isn't required, right? It can run with, without Istio. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that based on the diagram, they may use Istio to program their data plane. So that needs to be checked out to that. Yeah, question. I think I think there is a hard dependency on on Istio because of the control plane. Um, I will. I, I I can't remember off the top of my head. I do remember that they did say there was an optional control plane. Which um, basically added additional capabilities and feature functionality. I think that was more around monitoring side of things, uh, specific for Simant. But um, yeah, I, I, I can't. I just can't remember off the top of my head. I, I think I did detail the architecture inside of that. Um, the, the DTL. I'll, I'll have to have a quick look. Um, Is it a deal breaker? Do you see this as like a stopper for a vote or or? I, I'm just wondering if it... Is there a concern if they depend on Istio control plane? It's just a, it's a hard dependency. Would it be better as a subproject of Istio? And I no, I don't think Istio wants this project, to be honest <laughs> with you. So um, by the way, we actually, I think we're probably going to review another project from Huawei. We did have a discussion in Istio. We don't want that project either, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, K-Mesh. It, yes. It, it, <laughs> I think, you know, in, it, in, in an ideal world, like I think the simplification of the landscape is 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 beneficial to to the community. But I think ultimately having a kind of a, a standardization around a control plane, and, and if that standardization is is the Istio control plane, then for for folk to get used to to using that and understanding the configuration, and then if if you can have the data plane, which which becomes a pluggable element and can therefore be be very specific to a, a particular category of workload. I think that's a kind of a an okay thing. I yeah. think for maintainers of Samant, it stops them having to reinvent the wheel and creating a control plane when when really what the problem they're trying to solve is just around the data plane. Um so I but it, you know it's not my decision, but I, I think um yeah. No, I think you're right. That's what Istio is designed yeah. for. You should be able to plug in your own data plane or you should just use Istio for control plane. Yeah. Right. So I suggest, uh, I, I see Josh, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I was just going to say plenty of things have a hard dependency in Kubernetes in the yeah. CNCF. 
Um, I don't I don't really see this as that different. Okay, so uh, we move Sermon to a vote. I saw uh, where I took a note already. So we can move to the next one, which is Coop VPN. Um, so uh, I will, which is a cloud native dev environment that seamlessly connects to your Kubernetes cluster network. Uh, I do, I did check here and they mention a uh, presentation to tag network, but I went through the notes and I, I, I saw that there's a, the 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 project's issue on that it was closed, but I don't think they presented yet. Is that correct, Nick? That, that's correct. Yeah. So there's um it was just like the uh, well a couple of weeks ago I, I said I, I apologize I've had flu for for over two weeks. Um. So KubeVPN um have said that they would like to present that that hasn't been hasn't been done yet. So I do, I don't think I think we this one has to be passed over to the next. The next review because I, I have no recommendations or, or anything on the on the project at the moment. Okay, uh, is there an, anyone has other comments on the project right away? Sure. Right now, it's a single developer project. Maybe if uh, they wait a bit, it will be more than a single developer project. So if if if, if it's oh, sorry I, again, I I apologize. I've I've not done any due diligence on this, but. I, I believe if it is a single developer project, they they're they're not going to get accepted anyway. So I think maybe what we need to do with the tag is is to help them develop some exposure with the the project before they submit. Yeah. Um, I'm, I could be corrected on that, but I I know that um, Heimdall, which was reviewed last time, was bounced because of that that same same reason. No, you're completely right, Nick. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Emily, you have your hand raised as well. Yeah, so I kind of want to echo a lot of the things that have been said around the current maintainership of the project. There also seems to be some disparity between the project's application sitting that it's quite mature, but doesn't necessarily seem to actually reflect that within the code base. I did have some concerns, particularly since we already have a project in this space that is very similar, telepresence, which has been around for a long yeah. period of time. Um, yes, it, it is quite mature for a single developer project, as Josh had stated. Um, but given kind of the complexity associated with these type of projects, largely targeting developers within the ecosystem and enablement of, of doing development for Kubernetes. Uh, I'm curious as to um, whether or not it makes a lot of sense for us to bring this up to a vote. It sounds like, I don't think so. It sounds like it's not quite ready or meets the expectations that we would traditionally have for a CNCF sandbox project. All right. So, uh, yeah, I also saw the same. There's like nine contributors, but seven have a single commit and the eighth have five commits and all the rest is one person. So, yeah, it's a single yeah. highly motivated maintainer, but it's still one person. Okay, so we have options here. Either we close uh, so that they reapply in, in a few months if they build a community around it. Yeah, I... Or or we wait for a tech presentation and we put it in waiting. Any preference? Yeah, I I am. Um, I know this is not the topic for this meeting, but I would be super keen to help out in in any way to help to to grow projects like this, which are kind of maybe pre sandbox, but but have a lot of potential. So maybe that's uh, we we can. Okay. Kind of so Emily is re recommending that we close it and redirect the tag network to follow up on building a community and understanding better. So does this sound okay? Uh, who will do it for closing? Any volunteer to close it? Or is it Bob doing it? Uh, I can help with, oh, Emily, <laughs> sorry. Emily just volunteered in, in the chat. I think we'll have other chances today. And, all right, thank you. So the next one is uh, Yuki, um, which is an OCI container runtime in Rust. There is a full review by Tag Runtime. So I don't know if there's anyone from Tag Runtime that wants to comment, but the document is here. 
Yeah, hi. Um, this is Steve. I'm from Tag Runtime. Um, one of our tech leads did the review uh, and had um, recommendation to proceed with Sandbox. Uh, so uh, they actually presented to Runtime twice, once in 2021, and then we re did another presentation last month, uh, and we saw significant growth and change in the project and maturity. Um, so at, at this point, we're we're recommending uh, going forward with Sandbox. Right, and I see Tim. So you left a comment. Just uh... yeah, I just wanted to be sure yeah. that the additional um, uh, <clears throat> Rust crate that they uh, use is also part of the submission, and it's not you know not just uh, the one that they mentioned about. So. Uh, things that they use. Uh, I think this uh, other uh, Rust crate also has the same set of people. So I'm assuming it's exactly the same. So we can do a caveat saying, hey, we'll accept you if, uh, I mean, we can, we, at least we can ask them about it. Mm -hmm. I think you did, did already, right? So, yeah. I... So, <clears throat> so we can always consider going to a vote with this. Uh, uh, One day, yeah. Clarify. Uh, but other than that, it looks really good. There's a lot of uh, people that I know from the container com community and uh, uh, cryo community that are already part of uh, this community and maintainers in this community. So I'm really happy to see this uh, going forward. Yeah, just as one more data point, they did update the maintainer list, I believe, uh, just in the last couple of days. And there's at least four or five different organizations already, and as well as independents. And just one clarification, it's not limited to WASM. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure that uh, people here um, hear that. Yeah, for sure. It's it's also um, can plug in directly as a backend to things like container D, um, you know, as a run C, C run replacement. Um, is there a reason why this project is not an incubation project? Because it's that sounds like a lot more mature than some of the sandbox project mm -hmm. we reviewed. I had the exact same note here uh, to ask uh, Stephen how far they feel it, it, it is from incubation. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, for, for what it's worth, it's not currently adopted in any Kubernetes distro today. They don't, uh, they do primarily through Podman today. Um, uh, cube so spray, I, Steven. Cube um, spray, that, that's right. Yeah, sorry. That That's the one. Um, but they, they did mention they, um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of distro adoption and are looking to expand there. So um, I, I, I can't speak too much otherwise as far as the incubation readiness. Yeah, I think we also have to look at the governance and security aspects of things before uh, we suggest uh, incubation. Uh, it's better for them to come through the uh, sandbox. Okay, cool. <laughs> but it's an impressive project for sure. Well, absolutely. All right, so this, uh, if everyone agrees, we move this, uh, we move it into a vote. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, the next one is Open EBS, which is uh, returning from archive, uh, and it's uh, reapplying to Sandbox. Um, there has been a little bit of discussion in the the issue. I saw Karina and Josh, you were both involved in the discussion. Do you have comments or someone from, from Tag Storage? Hey, um, uh, it's Alex from Tag Storage. Um, I did uh, add in uh, a review document at the end, although I'm sorry for the tidiness. It was at the last minute. Um, the general recommendation is that we think it should be, um, it should go forward uh, into Sandbox. Um, so I, I just want to sort of cover off 
some of the things that have happened since we we went through archiving because at the point at the point where we had where we archived you know there were a lot of challenges with licenses and branding and upstream issues and a variety of different things and i'm quite uh we've been quite impressed with the amount of change um and and reorganization that, that has happened to the project since um since the uh since it was archived so um fundamentally all of the challenges we had with um, a variety of storage engines that didn't have active roadmaps or they had licensing problems uh including you know jiva and c store and, and some others were 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 actually archived out of the project um that's about 40 or so repos um, that were removed and the decision was taken by the project to focus on um five engines four of them are local storage engines and one is a um is the replicated uh, storage engine um which have uh larger adoption and definitely better roadmaps and and, and better focus for um ongoing development um they also sort of restructured the the documentation and the repos to make it easier to understand and contribute to the project and updated some of the governance docs um, and they removed um, some of the brand conflicts um, which they had with the with the commercial offerings. In fact, they've, they've removed the commercial offering at this point and, and are sort of working to figure out what um, what commercial offerings might might happen in the future. So, so the, the the project and the team is very focused on the open source at this stage. Um, some that said, despite all, sort of all of the work. You know some of the user stats that they that that the project quotes can be perhaps a little misleading um because there are the different engines um one of the observations is most of the development is happening on the brat on the new biostore engine which is which is sort of the um the engine that has lots of the functionality um but a lot of the usage and and, and high um uh high utilization stats come from the local engines so so there is this this big kind of like disparity there um there is therefore still work to be done and and there is you know but but we do believe um there is a part to to incubation for this i think just as a, as a general thing the supporting stateful workloads in kubernetes is is um it's a hard challenge in many environments and there aren't a lot of um uh good projects in this space there's obviously rook and longhorn um and this i think would be would be a good addition to it specifically because the Maya store engine is very focused on some of the latest technologies around nvme over fabrics with the spdk um uh, storage stack and using some of the kernel IO U-ring capabilities. Um, it's in general, therefore, because of all of these things, the general recommendation is is to move forward. Are there comments? Serena, Josh, do you have anything to add from the discussion in the ticket? Or... I just what I had with that is that they've been working with tag contributor strategy on on governance and contributor setup because um, uh, they know that's a problem. My my main concerns were around um, open community, and I did have a concern when they said that after they were admitted to sandbox, then they'd be work more in the community. Um, I forget where that comment is. Um, I don't see blockers, um, just a cautious forward. It, it, is, it is a cautious, it, it, it is a cautious forward. I, I, I have had now a number of meetings with, with the team and some of the maintainers and, uh, people past and present, um, and they're, the, the commitment 
is is definitely there to continue improving and to continue to build on all the changes that they've done. Um, and the sort of they've kind of really decoupled the um, sort of commercial challenges versus the open source here and, and the open source team are, are sort of working autonomously now. So, so I I think on that basis it meets sort of the criteria for for sandbox and definitely you know I can see a, there's work to be done but I can see a part to get to incubation eventually as well. Yeah, this was the biggest uh, stick that we ever wielded. Uh, so uh, hopefully this turned the community around and um, so plus one to all, everything that you said, Alex, um, and hope uh, they continue. Chris also chimed in on um, with similar feelings. Uh -huh. Plus one from me. Okay, I, I was also checking the, the items we had raised during the archival in the ticket for archival of OpenBS. There were some follow ups to be done by the project, and it seems like they have done. I didn't see any anything missing from there. So we move uh, OpenBS to a vote. Is that okay? All right, thank you. So the next one is KMesh. So KMesh is a service mesh data plane uh, managing service to service communication transparently based on eBPF and programmable uh, kernel. Um, it's a data plane for Istio. Uh, and there is some comments, um, uh, I believe from Lynn about, and then Zongzu, about uh, the integration with Istio. And there is also a review from that network from Nick. So any comments? Yeah, I apologize. Uh, the I'm still trying to do the, the WTR on this. I've, I've, um, so I've just been slacking the last couple of weeks. I think KMesh is really interesting. They, they propose a, a different architectural approach to to ambient. Um, from my understanding, it's not as as kind of mature as as, as ambient because obviously ambient supports the, the the full Istio capabilities. Where I think we're we're still um, somewhat limited in the capabilities with with KMesh. But the the performance figures that they've published and and I have encouraged them to to do more performance figures are are very very impressive they um they they're suggesting that potentially a 30 percent improvement in or, or reduction in latency um over even even sort of ambient and they they can leverage that by using custom kernel modules now obviously the the, the offset of using a custom kernel module is you can't just um you can't just in, install it on a on a standard GKE cluster, you you've got to have um, custom nodes which which have the the module installed. But um, yeah, it's it's very it's very interesting. I think they I think they presented to to Istio, and and I understand sort of Istio is kind of like you know you you're, you're doing some good stuff. Keep keep going, do good stuff. They um they are dependent on. On STOD, they don't have their own control plane, and they don't plan to implement their own control plane. It's it's literally just an extension to, um, uh, sort of a, or a replacement to the kind of the STO data plane. Yeah, thank you, Nick. I can weigh in here too. Um, so, uh, because there are time zone in China, so they haven't kind of talked to the community, but we did review their slides, review the project. We did discuss in one of our community meeting. Um, the consensus is uh, the Israel project doesn't want to do anything with this project. The main reason is um, they have like two version of service mesh. One is the one uh, using Istio's waypoint, using Envoy-based waypoint to do layer seven processing, which is very, very similar as Istio. The other way is their ABPF thing, uh, which I don't think they fully, they implemented it yet. They are still working on it. Um, and the prototype they did with the performance number, it, they said it's faster than Istio Ambient, but Istio Ambient has also involved like 
over 30, 50 percent performance as well. So um, they were not using the ladies. I, I mean, it's it's just interesting dynamics of what they have with the Istio project that um, many of the project maintainer doesn't want to be associated with this project. And also the fact uh, they are changing kernel. Uh, I think all of their maintainers are from Huawei, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the Istio project would rather not associate with that because there are concerns of modified kernel, you know, from a Chinese sponsored company. So there was a little bit concern on that too, and whether the adoption could potentially take off in other the, in the enterprise uh, based on uh, located in other uh, different regions in the world. Um, so that's the other reason the project doesn't want to associate with this project. So uh, I, I'm just providing the Istio perspective uh, for you guys to weigh in so you have the context. All right. I saw Josh, you also mentioned here uh, that the project is actually a sort of spin off from OpenOil. Yeah, it used to be a sub project of Open Euler. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how that worked exactly, but but the history goes back further than the history you can see in their GitHub repo. But in general, from a contributor strategy, it seems like it's okay for sandbox. Yeah, our our requirements for projects for sandbox are pretty low. I mean, you know, the um, we're expecting projects to develop that over the course of being in sandbox. So, um, I, I mean. Mostly, you know, this is this is in informative color in case you're on the borderline between accepting and not accepting, right? Obviously, a better organized project is going to be a little bit more attractive. All right. So we have a positive review from Tag Network. Lynn explained uh, uh, concerns uh, regarding integration with Istio. Um, are we okay to move this for a vote? Yeah, I think Lynn's point around the the kernel module is a is a is a very good one. Um, there's that's obviously a a, a big potential vulnerability. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting. I think they're doing interesting stuff. I think they're they're okay. pushing the boundaries. I I would like to see them rerun those performance figures, um, to, to against ambient because if there's no performance gain over ambient, there's and for the community, I think you you know you. You kind of um, um, so so maybe we encourage them to to rerun performance numbers and stuff like that. Okay, so I think we agreed to move it to a vote, and there's a couple of things to follow, which is the performance uh, numbers, and uh, Karina also mentions mentions uh, uh, better understanding of the kernel module. Yeah I, yeah. yeah, I agree with Nick's comment. Um, follow up with the performance tests because last time they told me they are, they don't work with latest ambient, which is why they don't have the performance number. So, yeah. okay, that's fair enough. So Jorge, we or oh, Bob, I see Bob is in now. So we move this one to vote as well. All right, so the next one is OVN Kubernetes. So it's a robust Kubernetes networking platform uh, powered by OVN and Open vSwitch at its core. Um, there were a couple of items that were clarified already in the tickets. Uh, one of them was, I think, Karina, you raised the need to have a statement about moving it from, from uh, OVN to CMCF, and uh, they provided that. Um, and uh, there seems to be agreement on the maturity of the project. Um, any other comments? I think it's an interesting project. I think what they're doing is very similar to um, what what Cube Slice are attempting to do, and Cube Slice um, using very a very sort of similar uh, similar approach. In general, I would like to see projects like more like collaboration between projects which are very very similar technologies but um I, I don't see that as a, a sort of a, a barrier I think they seem to be doing some good good work good solutions 
And I, I, I see. Uh, I, I believe that the open, um, that the OpenShift distribution is now recommending uh, OVN um, Kubernetes as their um, CNI. So it also seems to have the adoption. Yeah, and that's really important, right? So the only comment again is, uh, ah, Tim, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, here I would like to ask uh, why not incubation, uh, right? Like did the self-select uh, to say, you know, go with Sandbox because they are, uh, you know, a Linux foundation project. They've been around for a while. Um, you know, they seems to be a little bit mature. So uh, I was going to say the yeah. same thing. I was going to suggest the same thing, but uh, what was this it, thing? It may be because the incubation, the new, the incubation queue is quite long currently. As, as in on current timelines, they could probably join Sandbox and be ready to apply for incubation before we would get, they would get in on the incubation queue. That's very fair. Yeah. All right. It seems like we agree moving this one to a vote. Yep. Okay. So next one is uh, Singit, which is a Kubernetes operator that allows you to push resources on a Git repository and manage their life cycle. Uh, there is a little bit of discussion uh, I had a quick look. It seems like a small project of one contributor, but um, others have. Uh, there is no presentation yet to, to the tag, which I believe is scheduled, though. I think the presentation was done on oh. last Tuesday. OK. Yeah, but, um, I was there and hosted the meeting. They, oh, yeah. they just presented. Yeah, so we don't have a re review, but um, yeah, it's a single contributor project as of now. So I think the what we were discussing earlier still applies here as well. Yeah, Robert, I think posted. We were discussing between the tech leads where it's they were we're recommending not to have it join. It's just one person. There, it's a one person project. Um, there's no adoption really, uh, and lack of community around the project. So, um. It seems promising, but I think there is some work to be done. I think we can do at the tag level to encourage them, similar to other projects where they're a bit pre-sandbox. All right. Any other comments? It it looks like they could be a candidate for talking to the Open GitOps project. So that might be one way to go. Yeah, we could recommend that to them. Okay, so it seems uh, the recommendation is to talk to continue talking to app delivery, uh, talk to the open GitOps uh, um, group as well, and we close it uh, for now. Is this correct? Okay, do we have a volunteer to follow this up in the ticket? For the note, you said tag delivery and who else? I think it was open GitOps, was that it? Yeah, Karina? that was it, thank you. Karina, go ahead. I was just gonna say I can do that one. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and I think we have the last one in the queue for today, uh, which is uh, SlateDB, uh, which uh, ha is a cloud native embedded storage and Gen built on object storage. There's a little bit of uh, discussion inside already the ticket, but I believe they have a presentation scheduled for October 23rd to tax storage. Is this correct? Uh, that's correct. So we haven't um, we haven't had a presentation yet, but they will be presenting on the 23rd. Um, in concept, the project seems uh very interesting think of it as a distributed rocks db where 
the write ahead log and the mem tables stay local in user nodes and, and the actual compacted data goes into object stores. Um, and they can use sort of any type of S3 object store. So in concept, it looks very interesting, has you know utilization for things like data lakes and Kubernetes and that sort of thing. Um, but it's I can only go sort of from the architecture on the documentation side at this point because we don't really have the, the deep dive yet. No comments. But we didn't leave it enough coming until next time. They haven't had a chance to present. We're probably rushing I, this one a little bit. It it might be worth putting it into a waiting state until they've presented. Leave it until next time. That sounds reasonable. Everyone agrees. Uh, Emily, go ahead. Do we have any specific questions that we can ask the project in the interim between now and when they're scheduled to present? What I don't want to do is get into the habit of having projects go to tags as a blocker for the TOC to render a decision because we've been able to make decisions in the past without having that. Although I will say that much of the feedback and recommendations, especially around the DTRs we've gotten from tags as of late, has been immensely helpful in providing appropriate evaluation of projects prior to moving to a voting decision. Like Josh, you had some comments, like there was some governance stuff. But... Yeah, there, there were there were comments already on the on the issue that were uh, answered as far as I can say. Yeah, the and governance it... stuff is just a paperwork check. Yeah, but even there were there were some technical comments as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, not there, bring my tag contributor strategy hat, and and this this will be something I'll bring to the tag storage meeting. Right, is that I feel like we're getting requests from database projects to join the CNCF that are not primarily cloud native. Um, as in, yes, you know they can be run on Kubernetes. Anything can be run on Kubernetes. Um, I, but they're not primarily used um, in a cloud native environment. Um, and this one is actually a little bit closer than we had, what was it, StarDB or something, um, which I was more previously familiar with from my database history, you know. Um, and, and I feel like we need to have sort of a pragma about, you know, uh, for for databases and storage, they're going to have some cloud native usage and some non cloud native usage. You know, what do they need to show to be sufficiently cloud native for the CNCF? Because because compare I, this is like say, what if one of the MySQL forks that is primarily used on bare metal systems applied to the CNCF would we accept it? Right. Um, no, un un understood, and, and I completely agree with that. By the way, you know, if if this is a container that runs in Kubernetes, then it's it's probably not a candidate. But I want to understand if it's closer in concept to something like you know TIKV, which which is um, you know very cloud native in terms of the way it distributes and expands and is declarative and, and all of those kind of things, which um which which would which would sort of possibly sway sway my vote one way or the other but but we don't really have enough to go on at this stage so it's 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 a wait and see okay so emily dropped the uh, uh, document in the chat about the cloud native storage white paper that might help answer some of these questions i think bobby you raised your hand yeah the the only real question I have is like, as far as I know, this one, it only functions as an, it's like a library. It functions as an embedded thing in Rust. You cannot use it standalone. Um, it has to be baked into whatever you're programming. There's no containers, no nothing. Um, the only thing to me that's cloud about it is that it connects to S3. Thanks. Oh, I was pasting, I was going to say exactly what Bob said, uh, plus uh, there's a URL um, which shows exactly what um, the user, usage pattern is. Um, there is no UI. Um, it's almost like uh, the bold DB library that we use in HCD. 
it's exactly similar to that. Yeah, that for... actually is a perfect uh, example. Yeah. Okay, so so the recommendation is we keep it in uh, uh, waiting until the presentation on October twenty third, but we raise these questions about uh, yeah. the, how fit it is to cloud native, given these uh, specific items, and we try to clarify them at the tech presentation. Is that okay? Sounds good. They did get asked to fill out the cloud native part, and we haven't looked, I don't think, at the result of that. Is that right? Or am I thinking of the project right before this? Which yeah, there's part the cloud that? native fit part right there. Yeah. Cloud native overlap, no response. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the fit they replied, we can ask for the, the other two, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Can can someone uh, comment uh, with this request for the tech presentation? Uh, maybe someone can just put the uh, items there to be clarified during the presentation in the direct in the issue. Any volunteer? Maybe Alex, you will be, yeah. I guess you will. Yeah, cool, thanks. All right, and I think that's it for the list today. We do have two projects in waiting. Do we go through the two uh, quickly, Emily? Uh, uh, Emily, go ahead. Uh, no, so SpinCube is waiting until we pull Spin up for evaluation so that both of those can go together. And then 3Port, I believe, actually has an open comment on it, um, which is why it's still waiting. I think we were, let me just double check. Yeah, I, the reason I was asking is what do we do with those if they yeah. don't reply? Because this has been for a while. Um, so oh, let's take uh, let's take three port offline. Um, Bob, can we follow up and figure out what the outstanding status is? Um, it feels like there's they're supposed to actually it says that they're supposed to resubmit after six months, um, and they've reached those milestones. So this should be marked as postponed and then closed. Um, and then I wanted to follow up in the meeting chat about Kaito um, because I saw it was on there. I had notes and evaluation on it. It's no longer in the queue. Um, so I wanted to understand what happened with that project and why it was removed from upcoming, if anybody knows. Which one is that, sorry? Kaito, K-A-I-T-O. In, in my list, I had it after open EBS and before Kamesh. Okay. So let's take it. And I also um, want to mention they did present to the tag app delivery back in June. Okay. And then, What's weird is is I'm not seeing any. Like uh, usually it'll it there's like a little bit of a log if it moves from like one column to another. Did it get closed and then reopened? Maybe. No, it was, it was definitely an upcoming because I did the tag um, yeah. contributor yeah. strategy check on All it, right. which I only do for upcoming. Should we, should we do it quickly then? We still have five minutes. I would because it, it currently like, it looks like it went to the, the bottom. It, it might have been an, an accidental move. I think what happened is that they presented to tag app delivery and then it got shifted to runtime. So it's possible when it, when it got shifted around. Um, they got bumped. Okay, we, we, we have a few minutes. Uh, I see Dylan with the raised hands. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, they also no, that's, that, that's the only reason why I wanted Okay, cool. Yeah, they so, all presented in tag runtime so, a few weeks ago. So. so, okay, so it's a project that automates the deployment of AI models and the associated infrastructure provisioning on a Kubernetes cluster. I did not have a look at this one. Um, any comments? Uh, so quick um, uh, intro, uh, they use Carpenter internally and they build on top of Carpenter. So that's a really good integration with uh, the Carpenter project. Um, and that's what, uh, you know, it didn't show up clearly. So I wanted to call that out. All right, there were some questions from Emily that I believe were answered. And Ricardo, do you have a tag uh, assessment? Yeah, so it's a document there. I mean, I think for sandbox it's okay. So this is um, kind of like a gap in the Kubernetes and how to package models and deploy them 
ML models in PMS containers, basically, with Kubernetes. Um, so I think it would be good as an early project. I think it's something that, um, you know, can keep evolving in the AI space and, and, and then basically continuing with that story about how to run AI on top of cloud native. Okay. So if uh, everyone agrees, we move this one to a vote as well. Okay, cool. Um, and I think that's, uh, Karina, go ahead. Um, it's not about this project, but um, first, Ricardo, thank you for doing the DTR on that. That's awesome. Just being able to see it right now in our limited time, it helps a lot. And going back to um, reading it through before doing a vote will be very helpful, too. I um, wanted to mention that the the DTR is a the PR is in the the TOC repo. So another reminder to comment and review because it's the updated um, template for the DTR reviews. So any tag leads that are here, um, please take a look at that before it merges on Friday. Awesome, Emily. Karina, it was actually merged this morning because we already met the requirements for the TOC decision. Awesome. We were awesome. well overdue. Yeah, pretty awesome. Thank you everyone who participated in that. It has been incredibly helpful and a special shout out to Ricardo for hosting today's Sandbox meeting. We really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, we have one minute left. So I think- uh, you Want the quick that's... summary? Sorry to interrupt. Say again? Uh, you want the summary of all the items? Was... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. all right. So move to vote. We got Reloader, Surmat, Yuki, OpenEBS, Kmesh, OVN, Kubernetes, and Kaito. Uh, Syngit, talk to app delivery and open GitOps. Karina to close. Cube VPN, Emily to close, not ready. SlateDB, waiting uh, waiting for the state until the presentation. Leave for next time. Alex, C to ask follow-up questions. And three port, Bob, check on status, postpone, then close is what I have. I think that's I, it. I will toss that in the GitHub issue. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.